Hello, my stamping friends. It is Tammy Nelson with Stamp and Scrap with Tammy. I am here today to share with you a Party Puffins class that I recently did. It is for September 2021 Birthday Club with Stamp and Scrap with Tammy. So this video is for those that purchased the class as well as all of you out there um, to share with you the Party Puffins and the happiest of birthdays a stamp set. So let me share with you the projects quickly. I'll tell you what was included in the kit as well for those of you that received the kit. And these are the cards I will be sharing with you very briefly today. I did prepare some of the elements to this in advance, but this one is going to be my absolute favorite to share with you how I created this background with some blending today. And let me get to what was included in the kits. So in September, Birthday Club with Stamp and Scrap with Tammy is supplies to create two of each of those cards I just shared with you, the matte decorative dots and some white Whisper White ribbon. That is, all of these are used on the project. So monthly, I do do two club classes. One is all occasions, that's the first one of the month. And then the second one is always all, all about birthdays. So this month we use Happiest of Birthday stamp set and the Party Puffins. Um, the add-ons are always available free, um, shipping and tax. So you can add them onto your kit. Of course, this is a prepaid option um, when you're purchasing the monthly kit. And let me share with you, let me see the stamp sets. They are on page 66 and 67. So I thought they were nice and bright, fun, cheerful cards. I grabbed that ribbon from there and I just love those matte dots that are um, in our occasions catalog, our fall December mini. They per paired perfectly for a bright, fun card. Okay, so I'm going to get started using, I did a little bit of the work in advance. So I've got the color contour dies. Look at this ribbon. I'm going to share with you on the next card how I colored that. I used my blend markers to color that. I've got the color contour in the background on Daffodil Delight. I colored this ribbon with my Bermuda Bay um, blends. Now look at this. Oh, I did this on purpose. I didn't quite adhere this all the way through so that I could share with you. I love these dies because look at this. It gives me a little slot to put my ribbon through. And so I can put it on one side and the other. Look at that. It's nice and even. I did put a glue dot down in advance so that it will tie my bow nicely. Whenever I tie a bow, I like to have it secured with a glue dot. So see there it's in place. It makes it a much, much easier to tie my bow. So we're just getting started with something nice and simple here. And so these designs again are for September birthday club of 2021, but these are just really great designs. And the puffin set is in our annual catalog. So we have lots and lots of time to work with that yet in 2021, 2022 yet. So these will be really great cards that you can use. Um, you know, the design ideas, if you have the party puffin set, or maybe it's on your wish list. And so I've got Magenta Madness, or not Magenta Madness, Mango Melody, Daffodil Delight, and then I've got this white contour die ready for the stamping. So I'm gonna grab the largest stamp set from, or the stamp, from the happiest of birthdays. I do need to get some Bermuda Bay ink, which I have right here. There's gonna be a little two-step to this. So I'm gonna stamp it right onto the die first. Larger stamp, so I like to go over the top with my stamp or my ink pad. I'm gonna go straight up, straight down on this. Let it, the ink soak in just a touch to that paper and then pull it off and I've got a nicely stamped image. Now, because I'm using this in the background, the Mango Melody, I wanted to pull that color in one more time. So I'll show you what I did there. I'm gonna clean this off. So you're gonna wanna have a stamp cleaner of your choice. I do have my Simply Chamois is what I'm using today. I also like the stamp and scrub, but um, it's a little bit, the chamois a little bit handier um, on my desktop here. And so now I'm going to stamp it in Mango Melody, the same exact stamp. But you know what? I can grab a little piece of scratch paper here. As you see, that's what I was coloring my ribbon on. I don't need this whole thing stamped because I'm just going to add a couple of the words to the front of this. And so I'm just, I'm going to kind of ink up the whole thing so I don't miss any spots. 
but I just want a few of the words. I want the you, the, and of, okay? So I'm just gonna stamp it off. It's not gonna be the whole thing. Which when I did this, I thought, wow, that would almost make a really cool background as well. So there might be another card coming with this one in the future. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that apart, okay? So I'm gonna cut the you, the, and the of apart and look at what I have. Voila, like a cooking show, it's all ready to go. And so then I'm gonna adhere these with dimensionals. And it just adds some color to the card. I just love doing this with the words. And I put the mini dimensionals on there. And then I'm gonna just cover it right over the top. So if you got a glance of the cards in the pictures, if you when you got your email for those that took the class, you may have were looking like, how in the world did she do that if you got started? I know a few people that were at the live class asked like, where did you get that from? Well, they came right from the stamp set. I just cut it off and now layered it right over the top. So we can really go ahead and put this together now. So I've got my ribbon. I left it nice and fluffy. You can make it as small or large as you would like. I liked it. It gave it a little bit of drama when I left it larger. So I will adhere this right to the front. And then I'm gonna put this on some dimensionals. So this card to me is absolutely stunning, but is also very simple to do. I did already stamp and color my birthday cake that came out of the party puffin stamp set. I was just drew to how that fit in so well with all of these words in this stamp set. So it's so fun when they coordinate together. These are what I call standalone stamp sets where they don't come with um, die cuts or anything. So if you are into simple stamping, you might wanna really take a look at those. Of course, I do like to add some dies and things for you know these larger ones for backgrounds, but there's no real big, huge, intricate die cutting on this. So very simple, successful, stunning stamping that we have today. I do wanna move that just over a little bit to snug that in there. Oh, I'm going backwards. I'm upside down here. So, okay, here we go. And adhere that right to the front. And then I'm gonna put this down there. I did think maybe it needed just a little something else. So what I'm gonna do there is just get some white twine. And all I'm gonna do is wrap it around my fingers a couple of times. And I do keep a um, paper snip separate just for ribbon so it stays nice and sharp. So I have just like a little circle, I like to call it like a lasso is what I have there. I'm gonna put a glue dot down and now I'll pinch these two together like so. I'll pinch the center and place it down right on my glue dot and put a few dimensionals on here. And that's gonna almost complete our first card. I do think we should add some matte dots to that. So isn't that adorable? And I will get in my matte dots. I have some that are opened already. I'll use my take a pick tool. I'm gonna use these lighter yellow ones. I love how these are toned differently. And you know what you can do, if you don't have the color that you would like, you can go ahead and color these with your blends. I'll show you that right now while I'm thinking of it because you never know, I may forget that um, when I get to it. So something I did on these real red ones, my next cards, I'm gonna be using Poppy Parade. And to me, these red ones here, these red matte dots from the Occasions catalog, um, they're more real red and cherry cobbler. So on the lightest red, because it's like an ombre, that's the words I was looking for. Um, it goes from darker to lighter, but none of them were really Poppy Parade. So on the lighter ones, I took my Poppy Parade marker, my blends marker, and I colored them in and I made them Poppy Parade. So that's just a little tip. You could even color, say, saying you needed more Poppy Parade, you could color this yellow one because it's a lighter color, so it's gonna pick that up. And you can make these really any color that you want them to be. So that's my little tip on the dots. You can also color the rhinestones, the pearls, any of the elements really you can color with your blends markers. All right, so that completes our first card. I'm gonna move to the second card. Now we're gonna go with the easier ones to start and then we're gonna end it with that blending card. So next up we have got, I'll bring the sample in. 
So what's gonna be really great for myself when I'm done with this video, I'm gonna have eight beautiful birthday, fun, cheerful cards to send. So in this next one, we're gonna just do a nice happy birthday. I think I do need to grab out one of my markers. I'll show you what I'm gonna do there. And so I'm gonna stamp this two times, okay? So I'm going to get my happy birthday stamp from the Puffins. Now when you're making yours, you're gonna have two of each. So what you can do is use, you'll use all of these. So I'm gonna go straight up, straight down. I've got um, Daffodil Delight first. And oh, you know what I was gonna show you you should do? I'm gonna use the other side of that. What you should do when you're stamping these puffins, I'm using Memento Black because there is such solid, um, I don't know, images with that puffin, you're gonna wanna re-ink your Memento right off the bat. So with a Memento refill, that's all you do. Just rub it along there, get some nice fresh ink on there. So let's do that again. Now you're gonna see how vibrant this is. I really didn't intentionally do that. I did mean to tell you that right away. So let's do the other side of my Daffodil Delight. Two sides to every piece of paper, right? And I will set this aside for now. And I'm going to do the same on here. I'm going to cut this down. So if you like to have a thicker image, that's fine. You can leave it like this. But it was harder to stamp on anything smaller than this. So this is a three-fourths of an inch strip. So what I decided I would do is I would just cut it down after I had it stamped. Because, you know, to stamp on something that's only a half an inch is pretty tricky to get it in there. So it worked out a little bit better just to fussy cut it. And so let's see, do you see, I'm gonna do two different colors on each card. So on one card, my Daffodil Delight will be on top. And on the second card, I've got Mango Melody here. So that one, the happy would be on the top. You see what I'm doing there? Not rocket science, but it, sometimes, you know, it takes me a little bit to figure something out of what's going on. So I will be as thorough as I can when I'm explaining these to you. I'm going to get rid of all those scraps. And so I've got happy and I've got birthday. We'll set these aside for when I complete the other card that I had in that kit that I took apart. Okay, so let's get putting this together. So I've got a poppy parade here. I've got to cut five and a half by, uh, let's see, the eight and a half, scored at four and one fourth. And then look at this, this Bright's Mango Melody. There's a six by six collection of um, designer series paper for every color family. And I chose the Bright's color family. So we've got Mango Melody, Poppy Parade. I don't know all the colors. I'll list off some of them. Pacific Point, Granny Apple Green, um, looks like, I don't know if pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie, I don't think, falls in there. But the pumpkin pie works great for the little bit of coloring on the beak. And so next up, what I'm going to do is place this right in, in here. So I did the, the designer series is just a two by five and a four. And then just layered the next, the basic white, um, a fourth of an, or a, yeah, a fourth of an inch bigger than that. We'll put this to the left. Again, I've got that color contour die again. I'm going to stamp my puffin right on there. We're going to do the happy little one that is celebrating a birthday. And let's go ahead. I've got my re-inked memento. So you can see now how bright that is. And so, you know, if you're not sure if yours needs to be re-inked, just try it on a scratch piece of paper before you put it right onto your die that you've spent time cutting out. I'm going to go straight up, straight down on here. I'm doing memento because I'm coloring with blends. If you're coloring with the Stampin' Right, you would want to use stays on. But since I'm using my blends, I'm doing memento. See how crisp that is because I had just re-inked that. I mean, I am going to let that dry just a second because it was pretty inky. I am going to get a light green. So a very light, so I've got dark soft sea foam light would work too. Because my penguin, like without doing this part, he's just kind of floating up there in the air. Like, what is he even standing on? So we need to make him a ground. We're gonna make this little, or I keep saying penguin, puffin. He needs to be grounded, so look at that. I'm just gonna do that. Now he's got some ground to stand on. Big, big tip of the day. So, and with the blends, what's nice, you see I colored the foot. What's really great about the blends, I'm gonna use the fine tip in, is now I can color over that. You're not even gonna know that that was there. So let's color him in or her, the puffin, 
and the beak is orange. I'm gonna do this even, or orange yellow. I'm getting my colors mixed up today. And now I'm gonna get orange. See, I'm like thinking one step ahead of myself. And I've got the orange blend marker, and we'll do this part of the beak. And then let's get in so we can tie in our poppy parade. And I would have done this mango melody, but there actually is not a mango melody blend. So the pumpkin pie is gonna work just fine as an alternate. I'm just gonna color in the hat with my poppy parade is what I have. You know something else I added, if I have one handy, uh, maybe I'll go back and do that. No, I'll do it right now. I did on a lot of the white part of my puffins and it might not show in the video. I added a little wink of Stella on the belly. And the face, I thought that was really cute. Okay, so next up, we can go ahead and adhere this to our card. Look at how beautiful that is. That is just so fun. I don't know if beautiful is the right word. I think fun, it just makes me all full of cheerfulness. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on with dimensionals. I should have grabbed my larger ones. That's okay, I'm not gonna use too many for more of the cards or the Parts I'm gonna do them on the other cards are the really small parts. And those we definitely want minis. So if you're using, if you're trying to think, do I want, which size do I want? If you can only choose one, for this card, choose the smaller ones. I'm gonna put that somewhat in the center. And then let's do the ribbons. So here's where I will show you. I may even have enough ribbon here for both cards. But for the sake of showing you, I'm gonna just show you how I did this. So when I was planning out this card class, I decided that I wanted to have many different colors of ribbon, so I started with this basic white. This is a really great ribbon to color, the Whisper White Ribbon, it's in the annual catalog. Um, and you can color it any color you want as far as, you know, as long as you have a blend. So all you gotta do is color it. So you can have every single color of the rainbow with this ribbon if you have the blend marker to match. And so that's exactly how I created all the different colors for today's class, as well as on one of the cards I did use just white. So I'm going to just snip a little piece of this off and place it in the back of here. I will place it with some dimensionals. I'm gonna make it just like a little support type ribbon is all I'm gonna do and grab a glue dot. Place the glue dot down here, just up to the right of the hat. I'm not gonna overthink this situation here. I'm just gonna place it because I can I can maneuver it around a little bit after I have my happy and my birthday in place. Let's hope I didn't lose that. If I did, you know what? I can just grab the other one, I bet. I think I'm gonna have to do that. I'm not gonna search too hard for it. It'll show up as soon as I'm completed with the card. So we got that and that. We're gonna put those little minis on there. Look at that. This is just making me happy. So in the card kits, um, everybody got one Mango Melody, one Poppy Parade. So you'll be able to see how it looks um, with both of them. Okay, and let's put this straight across there. Just gonna put it kinda, you know, a little angled and then we'll angle the birthday going the other way. So one up, one down. And now I will go ahead and kinda pull this apart see where I want it to be and then if I wanted to trim it down any I could but I think I like it just how it is so next I will add some more of these little matte dots I added these matte dots on each card I'm gonna put the two colors we'll put the daffodil delight tone and we'll do these red ones that I colored a little more in poppy parade All right, another completed card. Now you can add a white insert in those as well and do some inside stamping if you would like. Next up, I'm going to do this one. This one is just, oh, isn't it so cute? I did do a little work ahead on here, but let me bring it out. Because there aren't die cuts for these, I did do a little fussy cutting. I stamped my puffin, cut it out. Let me tell you, this is like the most simple thing to cut out. It is not difficult at all. And then I do have a piece for the front of the card that I embossed in the Tasteful Touches embossing folder. It's a very, or Tasteful Textures maybe is what it's called. It's just a nice little subtle texture to it. I've got Granny Apple Green for my base. 
That's gonna be the insert. I'm not gonna worry about, oh yes, this one, you know what? I'm not gonna worry about the inside. Yes, I am on this card. This card is so cute on the inside. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna surprise you with that when I get to it because it's just adorable. And I'm gonna just go ahead and push that into place with my bone fold that is very stained. I'm not sure it's permanent. It doesn't come off. I've washed it. It's, it's there to stay. It doesn't rub off on my paper. Must have been some stays on. And let's adhere this just to get it out of the way. No, that's a bad idea. Let's set that one aside. Good thing I have two. <laughs> I gotta remember what I'm doing here. So no, I don't wanna adhere that yet. I do that all the time. I'm sure you have as well. So what I want to do is adhere these little pieces. So I brought that designer series paper in. So again, it's from the Brights collection, the six by six. I've got, I'm going to mat this on granny apple green. You see how I'm using like two different colors on this one here. You can kind of get a peek of that. I used the two different ones there and I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to, I use the Pacific point. Now I'm going to use granny apple green. So you can see how one package of paper, you can make the same card just in a variety of different colors. And all of these would in, intermingle quite well. So something I do need to do now, I have to take off these pieces that I've already colored. I'm gonna use this one um, on the last card. But for now, I'm gonna set that aside because now I do need just regular basic white. So I'm gonna make sure I have enough ribbon. I'm gonna just take my roll, I'm gonna Place it over this far. I need about that much, probably not quite that much, but I'm going to give myself some grace and just decide that's how much I need to be successful when I'm going to tie my bow. And it's going to be pretty big, so it can have a little excess. And I can always trim off the ends. And again, if you got the kit, you have a whole roll of it, so be generous with yourself. Leave yourself plenty of room to tie a nice, good bow. So again, do you see how I just added that glue dot? pushing it down into place. And now I like to turn it. For this card, I'm gonna let my bow, this one I did a little bit more straight, but let's see if we can get this one to kind of go this way. So this is like a crinkled cut whisper white. See that? <laughs> I really was generous. Do you think I needed that much? Probably not. So I might save these scraps. Those are pretty big. But hey, I've got a successful bow. I'd rather have a successful bow and this much left over, then have to re-cut it all together because I didn't leave myself enough. So now I can go ahead and get this piece out of the way and adhere it to the card base. Now that I got my bow on and my ribbon. Beautiful. And next up, I did use that contour die again. I've got those nice scallop rectangles and we need to add the happy birthday that is right here. So I'm gonna get a little slice of granny apple green for that. I'll see if I had it here. I don't know that I grabbed it out already. So I'll grab one from my card kit. So I've got a scrap of granny apple green. I'm gonna do that same happy birthday that I did on um, that previous card right here. And I'm going to be pretty gentle when I do my straight up, straight down, because remember, I did just re-ink this ink pad, so it is juicy. And I'll set that aside. I am putting my lid on each time because I don't want to accidentally stick my fingers in there and then get ink all over and end up having to redo my projects. And so let's just cut this one out again like I did the last one. And I love doing the layering look for this, so that's why I'm cutting it apart. And there we go. So let's go ahead and put some more dimensional. See, I'm really using these little minis today. So again, minis are the way to go for today's project. If you don't have the minis and you only have the larger one, that's no problem, just cut them in half. Okay, so let's build this up. Let's make this happen. So I colored this with a darker granny apple. I did use some crumb cake and looks like just a little of the orange because I did have the pumpkin pie to color those. Um, so that's why I thought I'd add it into my cake platter as well. So we'll put this on with some dimensionals. And then we'll add our puffins. And then we gotta do the inside on this one quickly. 
it's it's very fast. As long as I just drop that on the floor. I guess we'll see if my floor was clean when I flip this over. Yeah, the floor's clean. Okay, and then let's tuck this right on top of there. And then let's get the party started by adding our puffins. I'm gonna put one on the right, one on the left. The one up here looks like he's blowing out the candle. So the, we're gonna stick with that and put that one on the right side. Okay, here we go. So what I like to do, so this is how I create. I know everybody creates a little bit differently. I picked out the stamp set. I brought out only these supplies. So when I started creating for today's class, I brought out my six by six, um, these matte dots, and the ribbon, and the two stamp sets. And that's pretty much, other than cardstock, what I stuck with, and of course the blends. But I didn't pull in any other stamp sets, any other dies other than the color contour, you know, as far as for placement. But that's how I designed. So I had limited amount of products. Um, and then I just started creating cards and I could have made and made and made for this because these are just so cute. And let's put that into place. And you know what I did on this one? Let's see if it's, if it's gonna, it is gonna be perfect. I'm gonna put that right on the top. But if it was gonna overhang, I would just add another dimensional so that it would be even with that. But it's gonna work just fine, just like so. And so on this one, because we do have these granny apple green matte dots, we should put some of those on here. So these are in the, kind of the Christmas, fall, occasions catalog, but look at how beautifully they work with this set. Hopefully, this is one, oh, looks like I didn't get that one so great. Let me just grab another one. Um, these are like little dots that I would love to see in our annual catalog. So I'm just gonna keep using and using and using, so hopefully they'll see how much I've used them and go, whoa, we should really keep those around. People are loving those. So I encourage you to do the same thing. So look at how cute that front of that card is. So now let's do the inside of this card. And the reason I wanna do the inside of this one is because there are three puffins in this stamp set. So let's go ahead and stamp all three of them and add this sentiment from all of us. So this is a perfect card, perfect stamp set. If you tend to be like, maybe you're the person that always provides the, the card for the group, you know, from work or family or whatever, when you send a group um, birthday card from a group of people. So this is a perfect stamp set for that from all of us there. Now, of course, you can just put, you know, best wishes or something on the inside. You don't have to put from all of us if you're not sending a group card. But if you are, and like I said, if you tend to be the one that has to send the birthday card or you bring the card for everybody to sign, this is just adorable. So then what I did on the inside is I didn't overthink this. I just went ahead and placed my puffins throughout this card. I love it when like little animals are like peeking in, you know, from the side of the card, like they're sneaking in there, like what's going on? And then I think there's one more here if I can find it. Oh, it's a little birthday. And then we'll put this one over here. Do you see how great those stamp because that's re-inked? Isn't that fun? And so I didn't go right on to the, you know, the full image of it. They're just kind of sporadically there. And now for the sake of time, I'm not going to color those in, but you get the idea of that. And then, so look at this. I won't even adhere it because I'll wait till I color it. So look at that. So you open it and then boom, from all of us, just super cute. And let's do the last card. So the last card I will need, let me see. I think I'm gonna leave that. Nope, I'll bring that back in. I'm trying to, I'm thinking this through as we go. So our last card, we've got some heat embossing. We're gonna make a background. So let me make myself some room here. Gotta find, a, now I've covered my heat tool because I have those other cards on top of it. So let's get situated here. We don't need this anymore. But what I do need is this card base here. So this is what we're gonna work with to get started. And so, you know what, I do need a scratch piece of paper right away. I'm gonna bring in this one. I'm gonna bring in an actual mat. Here we go. And so what I need is a birthday cake. So this is a card we're working with. Let's see kind of wondering if you're looking in your packet, like where did she get that background? Well, let me show you. So 
So you can just go ahead and stamp this. So if you don't have the blending brushes or a method to blend or heat emboss yet, you can just go ahead and stamp this however you'd want, color in your cakes. But if you're ready to step it up, take it to the next level with some heat embossing and some blending, get out your Versa Mark and white embossing powder and use your cake stamp from the Party Puffins. And so I'm just very sporadically, I'm just tapping on here real gentle. I don't wanna do it too dark because then I'm gonna get little halos and then my embossing powder is gonna stick to those halos as well. Okay, kind of a perk, my memento or my Versa got a little bit, it's been a little weathered. So I'm actually, so it's actually showing up a little bit gray here, but I'm gonna cover it with white embossing powder. So that's not gonna be an issue. I am re-inking after each time I stamp and very randomly placing these cakes throughout the paper and even letting it come off of the paper a little bit. So essentially I'm making my own designer series paper right now. I do have my embossing powder in a little container. I'm gonna dump this back into my um, jar. And everybody has a different method for how they store and keep and like to emboss, but I have found for doing backgrounds, this is kind of a nifty little deal. I just have a little square jar and I can kind of just set it right in there and just go over the top of it like so. Okay, and I'm gonna flip it the other way to make sure that I get the top as well. I just pour the whole darn jar. I just put the whole jar on there, okay? I like to give it a little, I kind of blow on it just a little bit and I see that I have just a little bit of powder right there. I'm gonna brush that off with paintbrush that I keep just for that. So I'm hoping that, that this is showing up on the video. I'll bring it up a little bit closer for you to see. See there, if we turn it there, now you can really get a good look at it. I'm gonna set this aside and then let's go ahead and heat emboss. And so that what the heat tool is gonna do, it's going to set it up and make it nice and shiny. And then when we go in with the blends brushes, it's gonna resist the color where we have this white embossing powder. So it does take a minute to heat up, but then once it starts going, oh, it just started, I love it. Do watch your fingers when you're doing this. You don't want to get your, you don't want to heat your fingers up. And you can also go from underneath if you prefer that method. So how you would do that, you just go underneath, just how you would in the front. I'm not sure why, but I've always done it from over the top. So whatever you prefer. You can try, if you haven't heat embossed before, try both. So this is the white embossing powder. There's also, if I can think of them all, there's clear. Um, there is silver, copper, gold, black. And this is, like I said, the white. They do come in combo packs. So I believe it's clear, black, and white that come in a combo pack. And then the other combo pack option is the silver, copper, and gold. So we can set that aside. So now what we're gonna do is some blending. I do wanna clean my area. Um, real quickly. I just like to use this little tiny handheld vacuum to clear, clean it up a little bit so I don't get embossing powder everywhere. Okay, so next I'm going to bring my blends brushes. And I've got two colors I'm going to use. I'm going to use Mango Melody and Poppy Parade. I've got these holding in these very professional looking cups here, just so they didn't fall over. But what I can do actually here, I can set them aside. I can just let that rest right on there. So I'm gonna start, I have little blocks in those um, cups to make sure they held or they stayed standing and they didn't fall over. That's what you just heard there kind of fly off the table. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my Mango Melody. 
I'm gonna really push into this ink pad pretty good. I can re-ink this, that's no trouble. And so something I like to do when I'm using these blends brushes, I like to kind of touch off to the side before I put my ink to paper. That kind of avoids those harsh lines. You know, sometimes if you go right to the right to this paper from here, you do get the kind of a nice, uh, it's not nice, I don't care for it, a harsh line that shows right where you hit the paper first. Now I'm kind of going all over, circular motion, whatever works for you, if not, there's no wrong way to do this. Um, so it might be intimidating to you to start this or do this. Um, the blends brushes are definitely my preferred way to do blending, but if you don't have them yet and you know maybe you're, have other stuff on your wish list, you can also use um, a sponge or those daubers. These by far work the best though. Um, so now I've got my Poppy Parade. See, and so every time you make something like this, it's gonna be different. You're never gonna get the same card twice. I'm just gonna keep on. Make that as dark or as light as you want. So if you like it a little more pink, you would maybe just end it here. But I'm wanting it a little darker, so I'm gonna keep on. I'm gonna keep putting this ink on here and then blend them together. So now after you know I have it here, maybe I wanna go get a little more of this color. So then I can go back in, and then you see how it changes the look there. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there just so we're not taking too much of your time today. And something I did after I had it all together I did get a paper towel. I think I just knocked, I did, you know, I did a video earlier today and I also knocked my embossing um, gun heat tool off of my table and I just did the same thing. So we know it's durable. It's very durable. So I'm gonna just put a paper towel, a napkin over that to get the excess off of where I heat embossed. And looks like I didn't quite pick up the stuff over here, but that's okay. That's gonna be just fine. So now I can go ahead and assemble the card. So we have got Poppy Parade. Once again, use my bone fold. And then I'm gonna adhere, just so I get a nice pop of color, I'm gonna adhere this background piece to some basic black. And I just did an eighth of an inch larger so that it was just a real subtle little background. So it really pops. Actually, I think it pops more when you use just that little sliver of the background. And nothing else is going to go behind this base, so we can adhere this as well. And another fun technique that I just came up with, I'm not sure if it's really a technique, but something I am loving doing. I love a good scallop edge, and there are other die cutting sets that have this, but you know, I wanted to limit the supplies I was using, so I didn't want to pull out another one that would have this scallop edge. So what I did was I took my color contour dies, I went ahead and I cut out a basic black die, and then I cut these off of each side. So isn't that cool? So then I ended up with one die cut, I got four of these edges that I can use now on my card. And then just a little sliver of the Mango Melody I'm gonna put over the top of that. I believe I cut this like a three inch little strip of the scallop. And so that's really my big tip of the day is the color contour dice make a beautiful scallop edge that you can cut apart. And now it overlaps just a little bit so I will just snip that off of there so it's even. Let's adhere this to the card base all the way to the right. So I'm not even gonna use a puffin on this one. The real highlight here was this embossed part in the back. And our mango, not mango. Yeah, mango, there's, there's mango melody there. But this is where I used the color once again to do um, the coloring on my ribbon. So let's put some, a glue dot behind there. So glue dots and glue dots dimensionals are um, definitely a must for today's cards. This is by far the easiest way to adhere this ribbon. So I'm just gonna do a zigzag pattern here. Now I will go back up 
Okay, like so. Kind of a Z, if you're imagining what, if you need some imagination to decide, like what, how does that work? Um, imagine you're making the a Z here, a very skinny one, and then we're gonna go back down. I guess it could also be an S, maybe it's more of an S. <laughs> All right, and so one last dimensional here. So really at each point, each big point is where I'm putting my glue dot. I have tools for this. I'm not sure why I'm not using one. I sure, certainly should be. Okay, and then I'm gonna take again my ribbon scissors and snip off the excess that I had here. It was colored in Poppy Parade. And then let's see, we can just fold that down a little bit. That's gonna stay in place. I did wanna add one more ribbon in, so I did grab some silver twine from the um, silver, it's a silver and gold trim pack. I'm gonna do the same exact thing as I did on that card with the white twine. Just fold it, you know, wrap it around your fingers a couple times, and then grab, let's get a tool this time around. Why don't we do that? I'll just use my paper snips to get this glue dot. It works out so much better, I think. Okay, so I'll put that down in the center there, and that's what I'll stick the center of this twine onto. And last, we will need to stamp. We need a stamp on there. So we need it to say happy birthday. Um, there's also um, make a wish is also an option for this card too. I did use that on some of the inside sentiments as well as what is the last one? The you're the best. So really great sentiments for birthday cards. And we just need to find that last little piece for the birthday. So I do have this. This is a three-fourths of an inch um, wide is what you want. I didn't worry so much about my length um, because I trimmed them all down. I basically used scraps from all the other elements of the card to create um, all the little pieces for the sentiment. So there wasn't a lot of waste um, or leftover pieces when I created today's cards. That was really great about using limited supplies. So we'll go a nice straight up, straight down. And you'll see here, this is why the length didn't so much matter. You know, give yourself about a three inch strip because I'm trimming them down each time. Like so. And we'll put that on with some dimensionals. We'll finish it off with some of those matte dots. I'll bring in all the cards in the end here for you to see them in one nice grouping, as well as the stamp sets. And that's gonna wrap up the cards that I'm sharing with you for Birthday Club September 2021 using the Party Puffin stamp set and Happiest of Birthdays. Let's put that up just a ways. You know what? Now that I'm looking though, see, this is what's really nice. I can, I can change things a little bit. I want this just a little bit higher. We need more of that to stick out of the edge. So I'm just going to place it just a smidge higher. I just moved it ever so slightly. And we'll adhere that over the top. Beautiful with that background. And let's grab those dots one more time. Looks like I need to color just a few more of these, the Poppy Parade, to brighten them up a little bit. The top, so as it goes, you know, it's Cherry Cobbler, more of a real red, and none of them were really Poppy Parade, but I was able to use my blend marker to make them Poppy Parade. Okay, so I'll just put I like to I like to work in odd numbers, so I would either end there with three, but we've got this nice little space down here, so I think I will add two more down there and make it five. So that completes the cards. Let's pull them all in together so you can see them in one nice grouping. And look at this. I've got eight completed. Just absolutely stunning, beautiful, bright, cheerful. Can I come up with any more words to explain these? Birthday cards to send. So here as these. Look at that. Beautiful, and then nice, so we've got a birthday card for everybody here. There are two more, here's, let me see, where did it go? Here's this one, and we got this puffin over here. So beautiful display of cards using the party puffin stamp set, happiest birthday stamp set. So if you took birthday club class for September 2021, thank you so much, I appreciate all of you. 
if you have yet to take one of my club classes or um, you need to order any of these supplies because you saw this and now you're loving it, feel free to contact me. Um, I would love it if you would subscribe to my YouTube channel so you see future videos and check out any of the past videos that I have too. I've got lots of great things to share with you all. So I will be back with you all soon with another video for next month's birthday club. And I hope to see you all very soon. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me today.